Welcome to this lesson on uh, different methods and concepts for harvesting wind energy. This is part one of two lessons. Uh, my name is Mark Gauno. I work at DT Wind Energy uh, in the section of uh, aerodynamic design. Uh, the learning objectives of uh, this, this uh, lesson is that you will be able to distinguish between lift and drag driven uh, wind energy extraction devices. You will know which of the two have a better power production capability and you will be able to explain from first principles two really simple examples that show why that is. And then in the part two I will uh, explain more about a, a few selected unconventional wind energy devices and also you'll be able to list the basic elements that go into this uh, determination of any wind energy extraction device. Starting out, I'd like to just jump to the, the very basic basics that you already do know. So if we are to express uh, how to calculate the work, which is the energy transferred to an object via application of a force, this is done using this uh, dot product between a force and, and the displacement. And when the, if you look at the force component in the direction of the displacement, Fs, and if that's constant, then the work is, is the product of the force and the displacement. And since power is work per time, then you just take the time derivative of it and you find out that the, the power that you can uh, get out or have to spend is the displacement velocity times the force in the direction of the displacement. And uh, this is equivalent to uh, power being equal to a torque times rotational velocity. These are equivalent. Um, two other things we'll be using is uh, lift and drag, and uh, you may have heard of it. And um, it turns out that lift and drag, let me open the next figure here, lift is the force perpendicular to the wind speed, drag is the force component in the direction of the wind speed. So the total force is the sum of the two. Uh, the lift and the drag can be, in, in these cases that we look at, uh, calculated uh, with equations like this. So the scale with the density, relative wind speed squared, area of the device, and then coefficients. And then you can show with dimensional analysis that these lift and drag coefficients depend on really three things. They depend on shape, Reynolds number, Mach number. But for our applications, the dependency on Reynolds number and Mach number is very weak, so they actually only depend on the shape. And then by shape, I also mean the shape relative to the wind speed. So when you change the orientation, forces change. So if we are talking about wind, uh, an airfoil, then you can have a high lift and a very small drag. And of course, if you change the angle of attack, go too high, the forces go low again and the drag, the lift goes, drops and the drag goes high. And some concepts you would be interested in just having a very large drag and uh, a half sphere, like an, a, a hollow sphere that you cut in half will have a quite high uh, drag uh, and it has no lift. So examples of the values you could have here, uh, the lift, maximum lift of an airfoil is usually, uh, can be between one and two usually. And uh, the lift to drag ratio of a 2D airfoil can be above 100. If we're talking about a 3D object like a sailplane, we could have values above 50. And the drag coefficient for like this half sphere shape here is 1.4. So these are the, are the numbers you can expect uh, that are realizable in real life. So what I'd like to do now is to try and lay out the theory for how you can determine how much power we could get out of, of the simplest possible drag-driven device. So we have here a cart with a, this object on with a large drag. We have wind from left to right, and uh, this is the ground. And uh, when the wind blows on it, there will be a drag on it. It's, the car will be pushed by the drag. And the car will also be moving in this direction. So the car, the cart speed is V, and it's expressed as a as a constant times wind speed. That would be uh, convenient for, for later on. And uh, the way we take energy out of this is that we have a generator that is uh, on the axle or like a, a dynamo. 
put it, uh, put it on. And this means that there's a force exchange between the, the cart and the road. So the power from the power equations earlier would be that force times the velocity of the car. That's the power you can get out. And if we're at steady state, uh, then the forces balance. So drag and road forces are equal. And um, the relative speed as observed from the cart, so the relative speed meeting this object that generates the drag, is the wind speed minus the car speed. And you can express that like, like this, uh, with the, the speed, car speed ratio. Uh, the drag from before was expressed like this. And then if we combine all the above, we get the equation here for the power that this cart could, could give you out. This is the cart speed ratio. So it depends on how much the generator slows down the car. And it also depends on the drag coefficient of this thing, the area, the density of the wind, and it, it depends on the wind speed, uh, the cube of the wind speed, like all power extraction with wind should do. So this is how it looks. And if we're interested in just maximizing power out, then we find the, the speed ratio that will maximize power, and it turns out to be a third. So the best way to operate a car like that is to put enough uh, torque on the generator to such that the car moves with a third of the wind speed. And in that case, this, express, this part of the expression is 4 over 27. So this will be the, the relation for the, the maximum power that you could pull out of a drag-driven device like that. So to uh, look at the lift counterpart of this, now we look at a different view of it. This is now also a cart but we look at it from above. Now we have something on it that can generate lift without uh, too much drag, and uh, the car moves this way. So the, the relative speed seen by the car here is a combination of the free stream wind, wind speed from left to right, and then from the, the, the motion of the car itself. And still I use the same coefficient to, to determine the speed of the car. Uh, and then, the relative wind speed here is here, so the lift is perpendicular to it, the drag is in the direction of it. The total force that acts on the wing is the dashed line here. And when this is projected onto how big a part it goes to pull the car forward, we get the pink one here. So this is really what pushes the car forward. And like the other car, we harvest power using the, the dynamo on the on the wheels, and uh, again, the forces should balance at steady state. The relative wind speed is calculated with Pythagoras, and uh, lift and drag are determined with the equations from before. So, with a bit of geometry, we can uh, put, put everything together and then get the total force, uh, this force, and then we can use that to calculate the power, and then this is this lengthy equation. Again, depends on density of the air, it depends on the area and the lift, now the lift coefficient here, and again on the wind speed cubed. So this is uh, the dependence on how fast will let the car go. And now I'll take the equation, put it up there, and then I'll just try and plot the powers as function of, of I'll plot it for different lift to drag ratios for different wind speeds or car speed ratios. And these are the car speed ratios to, uh, or the, the car speed ratios out along the x-axis. The different blue curves correspond to different lift to drag ratios, two, four, and six, which by no means are, are large values in real life. And you see that the power you can get out increases uh, very rapidly uh, with lift to drag ratio. Um, and you also see that the fastest a car can go is actually the lift-to-drag ratio. Uh, and the, 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 the speed at which you get the best power is actually two-thirds of that, close to that. Um, that was these two. And then if you input that, the, the best uh, lift-to-drag ratio into this equation, you get the expression for how, how much power can you get for out of the lift cart? And you see that this expression looks very much like the drag one. Um, but there's a significant difference. 
So there's a lift coefficient here instead of drag, but there's this term, lift to drag squared. And if this, if you put a sailplane on the cart, which has a lift to drag ratio of 50, this will get 50 squared, so a really, really large number. And um, so when you compare this performance to the performance of the drag-driven cart with the same area of the, the, the device, then you see that the lift-driven lift, lift uh, driven device is simply superior. So this is one of the main takeaways take from this presentation, is that this is an example that shows you why lift-driven devices are much more effective here. Okay, so in summary, uh, this lecture you should have learned to distinguish between lift and drag-driven wind energy extraction devices, and you should have learned which of the two have a higher power production capability. And you should be able to explain from first principles using these two very simple card models, uh, showing why that is so.